رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي امين يا رب العالمين so let's start the discussion you must have heard this conversation in our communities if i'm talking to some of you that brother where are your kids go in which school let's say they will say my kids going to the public school then you might have heard this argument if my kids are not, are not going in public school and your kids are going in public school then i will say oh public school is a trash what are you doing so on so forth because my kids are not enrolled in public school so i will immediately attack other people whose kids are going to public school then other brother walks in other sister walks in and i will ask them your kids are going to public school they say no no my kids go to islamic school and if my kids are not going to islamic school then i will attack them oh islamic school you are keeping them in the bubble eventually they have to meet the real world they will not get get ready mentally prepared and they will eventually explode the bubble they will go to the other extreme when they will hit the college or high school so there is a constant argument in muslim communities depending on where your kids are going and then we have third model or third system of a school which is home schooling where your kids are going oh actually you know what i don't trust these school systems or public school or islamic school i am doing home schooling and then eventually you will hear the argument because with the parents whose kids are not enrolled in home schooling system they will going to say oh no home schooling what will happen to personality development what will happen to social skills if they won't go out of their home human being and we muslims nowadays whether we agree or not we have some arrogance if my kids are going into one schooling system i will going to defend that and if my kids are not going into the other schooling system i will going to pinpoint flaws in that system we just have to agree it's an undeniable fact for american muslims that these three schooling systems are there and our muslim community throughout the us are benefiting from these three systems yes there are islamic schools there are pros and there are cons there is public school there is pro there is con based on the priority of each and every individual and then there is home school there is pro and there is con that's not my topic my topic is how to protect and preserve muslim identity in american muslims how to make sure as a parent as an adult in the community i will do whatever i can so that my next generation will be proud muslims when we came whether you are an immigrant muslim or first second third fourth generation muslim here but the born and raised here or immigrant muslim we came here for different reasons many of us came for a good standard of life for safety for money this is this is fact many of us came because of health care because of education because of marriage and then eventually we realized after settling in here that we need to establish institutions if we want our kids to be practicing muslim and then we started developing institutions and by the way mashallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of our brothers and sisters who migrated or who were born and raised here and who participated in the construction of these masajid and this is cool say ameen now our concern is how to make sure that we do whatever we can to preserve and to protect muslim identity within our next generation why is this important for us the legacy is the legacy of the prophets ibrahim alayhi salam in surah al baqara is saying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa min dhurriyati when allah says ja'alu kalin nasi imam ibrahim you will be the imam of the ummah ibrahim alayhi salam is asking what will happen to my future generation fii he was an immigrant also at that time allah says la yanal wa ahd dhalimin my promise will not be extended towards the wrong doers not all of them will be muslims ibrahim he was he had this concern about his progeny what will happen to them yaqub alayhi salam when he's dying he's asking all his kids real bani israil ma ta'buduna min ba'di if i will die what you will going to worship after me this is a prophetic concern which i'm sharing with you rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam spoke with fatima in sahih muslim ya fatima bint muhammad anqidhi min nar oh fatima tomorrow save yourself from fire make sure you have the amal and the actions which can save you from the fire 
So this is a genuine concern every parents have to share, and this is a universal concern for all the Muslim parents. So now, how to do this? There are five things which we can do, inshallah ta'ala. If we can do this, we have done our part, inshallah. But there will be exceptions. Allah mentioned the exception of Nuh alayhi salam. One of his son didn't believe. Can we say Nuh alayhi salam was not a responsible father? No, he was a prophet, he was a role model. But at least we can do our part by doing these five things. And who have mentioned these five things? Not me. There is a collective body of a scholar, 31 scholars, headed by Imam of the Haram, Saleh bin Humaid, wrote a book, 10 volume book, Nadrat al Nain fi Makarim e Akhlaqi Rasul al Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the first volume, they discuss is this how to protect and preserve Muslim identity within your kids. And they mention all these five things, what I'm just going to basically give you a summary version of it. So let's start. The first thing we need to do as a parent, as an adult, to protect Muslim identity within our kids. First thing is not a school. First thing is family environment. Usra, family environment. No matter which school your kids go to, public, Islamic, home schooling, if they are raised in a messed up environment or an abusive environment, they will have issues. They will have issues. My teacher used to give this example that if a couple who have never traveled abroad lives in Egypt, Qahira, or Jeddah, or Karachi, Pakistan, or Somalia, and they've never traveled abroad, let's say if they are in Egypt, will their kids all of a sudden start speaking Turkish? No, they are never exposed to Turkish. Naturally, they will speak what they are exposed to. Basically, he was trying to say, whatever parents' priorities are, whatever parents' input is, the output will be like that. Kullu ina'in bima fihi yandah. A container takes out what it contains. And actually, this is said by Rasulullah sallallahu also, that parents have the first and foremost, the family environment have the first and foremost role in deciding the religion and the practices of the kids. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi says this beautiful hadith that if you want to preserve the religion of your kids, then remember this hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi says, مَا مِن مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبُوَاهُ يُحَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi says, every child is born on a true fitra. That's worshipping one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every child then their parents will going to mold or change them to follow their religion, whether it's Christianity or Judaism and so on and so forth. So Rasulullah is saying in this hadith, who play a part of changing the religion? Parents. I'm not saying that there is no exception. Remember the incident of Nuh salam. But at least learn that before I can put blame on a school and environment in American society, it's my responsibility. Am I doing my part? Am I having those discussions with my kids at the lunch and at the dinner table? When their grades go down, I'm really concerned and I should be. But if they are missing Fajr and Isha Salah in teenage, this should also be a concern. I should also have the discussion that why didn't you pray five times a day? Let's go together to the masjid. This should be the concern. And actually one of the other hadith about the same topic, about the importance of parents and the family environment before we can move on. Is the hadith in Bukhari? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum masaulun an ra'iyati." Every father, every mother, every head of the family is responsible for their family. We all will be responsible in the day of judgment about their spiritual matters. Can you imagine the importance of family and the family environment, Subhanallah, in the upbringing and especially in preserving the Muslim identity from Islamic perspective? We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to make us more responsible. Amin ya Rabb. Second thing, what we need to do. Second thing, what we need to do to protect and to preserve Muslim identity within our next generation is al-madrasa, is school. Yes, school does make a huge difference. But the scholars have put this after the family environment, not before the family environment. Because, and I'll tell you, there, as I said, that there are three schooling models we have in America, Islamic school, public school, home school. Why school does make a huge difference in the 
Muslim identity or protecting Muslim identity within our next generation. You are basically sending your kids for seven to eight hours daily and he or she will be standing in front or sitting in front of the teacher. Teacher have their own va values, own ethics, own morality, definition of good or bad, their own ideological crisis. And basically they are teaching to your kids. So it does make a huge difference who is that, who is teaching. And at the same time, you classmates, friends make a huge impact also. We'll come to that also later. But a school does make a huge difference. Having said that, there are th three schooling models we have, as I said. If your kid is going to public school, then remember you have to do the homework to compensate the spiritual deficiency because these public schools won't teach Islamic studies and Arabic and all those things and the Quran and basically Islamic values, then you have to do the homework. You have to be extra cautious by giving them time at the home, teaching them Quran or teaching them Islamic values. But you have to do your homework then. If your kids are going to public school, uh, uh, Islamic school, sorry, Islamic school, and as I said, Islamic school, but you know, subhanAllah, Islamic schools have different variants. <laughs> like cohorts have different variants. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from that. I mean, Yarab. But Islamic schools have different variants. So some Islamic schools are more traditional. Some Islamic schools are more conventional. Some Islamic schools are more conservative. Some Islamic schools are more liberal. All these terms are very consequential. So whatever they are, at least the basics in the Islamic school about the basic Islamic belief and everything will be somewhat covered. But even at that time, you cannot say Islamic school will do everything and I can just eat nachos and drink coffee. No. There's nothing wrong with eating nachos and drinking coffee, but you have to do your homework as a parent. You have to teach them also. You'll be surprised. I recently met an atheist. I recently met an atheist. And after our conversation, I found out he was a graduate from Islamic school, former Muslim. So never think that, okay, by this, we'll be saved. Do your homework. Family environment is important, and yes, schooling is also important. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us and our kids' religion. Ameen, Ya Rab. If you're doing home schooling, then also you have to do the homework you, to develop social skills, to develop personality development kind of a programs. But you cannot say that, okay, these schooling will going to do everything, and I can basically get rid of my responsibility. No, that, that's not happening. Third thing, which is equally important. So first was a family environment. Start praying together. Second, a schooling system. Make sure you give a good schooling system. Third, and you might be surprised what it have to do to preserve the Muslim identity with our kids. Third is masjid. Third is masjid. The role of a masjid in protecting and preserving the Muslim identity in our next generation is humongous. You will give a family environment, they will go to the good school, but if they don't see the community based on the principles they are learning from you and learning in a school, then eventually they will going to have issues and they will eventually find their friends outside. For us, the comparison is actually Masjid and Abu of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In that Masjid, Masjid and Abu, youth used to do Atakaf not only last 10 days of Ramadan, every time. There is hadith in Musnad Ahmad that Anas bin Malik radiallahu narrates. He says, Kana shababu min al ansar, sab'ina rajulan, yani majazan, sab'ina rajulan, min al ansar, yusammun al qurra. Anas bin Malik narrates that there were 70 companions, and this can be metaphorical because in Arabic, metaphorical 70 means many companions, young companions, shabab, young companions. They used to stay in the masjid. And they used to engage themselves so much in Quran and Salah and everything that people used to call them Qurra. And the hadith continues that their family thought whenever they are not at home, they must be at the masjid. This was the environment Rasulullah gave in Masjid and Abwi. Why my kids and your kids, my son and daughter and your son and daughter do not consider Masjid as a second home? 
Masjid without youth groups is dead. Not even in coma, dead. I'm so glad, alhamdulillah, ISBCC have Arcanums and other programs, alhamdulillah. But this is a reality. Our kids and need to be part of the masjid. Just one request I have before I can move to point number four. As, a, as an imam in this country for 10 years, I was in New Jersey for four years, in Connecticut I was in two years, I'm complete, completing my fourth year in Massachusetts in Worcester. I know that when we are working together in a masjid, yeah. there are a few issues. Because when people work together, they will going to have few issues. We are human beings, we are not angels. Whatever issue you have, just keep it with you. Do not toxicate the minds and heart of your kids from the masjid. Let them come. Because if they are not finding their friends in masjid, if they are not coming to the masjid, the other options are, are extremely evil. So keep the differences. You might have a legitimate grievances, legitimate differences. It's fine. It's fine. But at least select the lesser evil as legal maxim says. We should not pollute our kids' mind and heart from coming to the masjid. Fourth, fourth, so first is family environment, extremely important. Second is school, third is masjid. And I hope, actually we have eight minutes, I will just mention one thing about the masjid also. When youth will come to the masjid, will all of them will be perfect? No. We as an adult need to be welcoming. We as an adult need to create the environment in the masjid, not of the court, but of the hospital. Should I repeat this? We as an adult, including Imams, should create the environment in the masjid, not of the court, but of the hospital. Because in court system, you judge people. In hospital, you heal people. If kids are coming, sometimes they might wear shorts. They should not wear shorts, but if they are wearing, let them come, talk to them politely. If sisters are coming, they should wear hijab. But if they are not wearing, talk to them politely instead of screaming at them. Don't act like you are Ibn Taymiyyah and Imam Abu Hanifa of our time. Even adults backbite in the masjid. Kids doesn't scream at you. Backbiting is haram, right? Be patient. Be patient. That is a way we can heal and we can basically train the next generation inshallah and attach them to the masjid inshallah ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us wisdom ameen ya Rab. fourth and the last two things inshallah fourth is friend circle jama'atul aqran friend circle it's extremely extremely important if i want my kids to be a practicing proud muslim then i have to give them good friends see we all need friends we all feel peer pressure in every age, but especially when you are in that teen age or if you have studied or teen psychology or preteen, how they feel, how they want to be like the crowd, how they just want to fit in. So it's extremely, extremely important in that age, actually, it is more important for them to have a good friends than having a good imam or having a good speaker to give them advice because they need an influence from their friends. They need a positive pressure from their friends. And that is why Rasulullah sallallahu said this in a hadith in Abu Dawud. Al-mar'u ala dini khalilihi falyandur ahadukum man yukhalil. A person will depend on the religion of his friend. This is strange to us, right? I thought that I depend on my religion. Rasulullah saying, no, you will depend on the religion of your friend. Each one of you, watch out who are your friends. This is parents' responsibility to make sure to get your kids engaged in the activities, in the programs, whether in masajid, youth group, wherever you see that he can or she can get benefit. And not all the non-Muslim friends are bad. Not all the Muslim friends are good. FYI. FYI. So you as a parent have to have these discussions. And there are different kinds of friendship, very close friendship, mediocre friendship, just dua and salam friendship, 
all these different categories, have this discussion with your kids. And eventually, the only close dude practicing buddy friends should be practicing Muslim. Because that's where you'll get your influence from. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us good friends. Ameen, Ya Rabb. Even Rasulullah says, La tu sahib illa mu'minan. You should not be very good close friends except with the practicing Muslim. Illa mu'minan. Lam yakul musliman. The fifth thing, and inshallah, I will end here. If you do not remember those four points, I will repeat last time. I promised last time. First is family environment, al usra. Second is madrasa, school. Third is masjid. Fourth is friend circle, jama'atul akran. And fifth, last but not the least. And this was not there maybe a few centuries ago. <laughs> Social media, mass media. This is humongous. Now you can protect your kids from the information from outside and you can teach them the definition of good and bad until they will reach to a decision making ability and they can reach to the, they are mature enough. But now the cell phone, the social media, all these things are a teacher. And if you as a parent are not smart to deal and use these smart devices, then eventually they can be a lethal teacher, destructive teacher. Even the 15 minute advertisement on YouTube can teach the most destructive things and abolish all of your good work which you have done for 10 hours. So you need to be very careful. Don't think, I, I said in the beginning, don't think conservative versus liberalism. Think about common sense. Think about common sense. Sublime messages are at its peak. I have studied marketing management in my undergrad before becoming Imam because my undergrad was in fashion designing. In marketing management, they teach a separate chapter about how to give sublime messages to the audience. That's its peak. How they, just in an advertisement, they give their ideological sublime messages. And kids cannot even differentiate that because it's very difficult for the adults. What you would expect a preteen or a teenager to identify what is good and bad in that age? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our kids and protect all of us inshallah ta'ala. Aqulu qali haza wa astaghfirullahi wa rakumu lisa ala al-muslim ala al-muslimat. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi al-lazeen astafa. خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والطيبين والطاهرين أما بعد. As I said that these are the five things we need to pay attention as a parents and as an adult in the community. If we can organize this well and eventually do the right upbringing, when the kids reach to the age of maturity and when they can make mature decisions, inshallah, they will have the uh, right weapons in the metaphorical sense to deal with these challenges about the social media don't have the extreme viewpoint because social media have some good things also your kids can learn good skills also they can listen to Arabic language and Arabic recitation of the Quran and whatever so there are positive also and then there are negatives also so just like everything you need to make sure, take the good, leave the bad, and do that scrutinized part. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to do that, inshallah. The last thing before I can end, all these things will only benefit if we are asking dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our progeny. Ibrahim alayhi salam was a prophet. He was not only a prophet, he was an imam of the prophet according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran. Inni ja'aluka lil nasi. Imama. Still, he was making dua that, oh Allah, please protect my future generation. And because of his dua, later on, Rasulullah came. We all know that. Subhanallah. And this dua is so important, Allah mentioned it four times in the Quran. Twice in Baqarah, one in Al Imran, one in Jum'ah. So do not forget to make dua. That may Allah protect all of us and our kids and their Muslim identity. Ameen, Ya Rab. Let's make dua for the entire Ummah. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma ghzul man khazal al-Deen Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna ma'ahum. Allahumma la taj'alna zamban illa ghafarta. 
ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قضيت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين ولا مرضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا ضالا إلا هديت يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وعملا صالحا وإيمانا كاملا ويقينا صادقا ورزقا واسعا ورزقا حلالا طيبا وتوبة نصوحا وتوبة قبل الموت وراحة عند الموت والعفة عند الحساب والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار برحمتك يا عزيز يا غفار الله